Kyle, this offseason you've been as uh, confident as anybody, mm -hmm. saying you know you're expecting big things out of the season. And then everybody here is picking you to finish ninth. I guess mm -hmm. why are you still so so bullish on your team when maybe some outsiders aren't? Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at that preseason poll, I was I was honestly kind of upset we weren't tenth. Um, I think our team was as well. It's just preseason poll, preseason predictions. Um, you know, that we, there's something that we we have no control over, no control over. Um, and uh, I think everybody on our football team, including myself, knows what we have inside of our locker room, the type of talent that we have, the type of returning players and experience that we have on our football team, um, and know what we're capable of doing. And, you know, for me, it's just uh, just going into this season um, knowing that I'm the guy, I'm the starting quarterback, and our team knows that. I think it's, it's lifted our offense up and has taken it to another level um, and gave us the confidence that we really, that we needed. Um, and I'm just, I'm looking forward to putting a product on the field and, and showing, showing everybody what we're capable of doing um, and not just talking about it. You've probably seen very little of Jordan Brown, the new running back from transfer from North Carolina, but he arrived last week. What are your kind of expectations and what he will be able to provide? Yeah, well, just from the, you know, he just arrived this week, so I've only got to see him a couple times. But he, uh, he can move well, he can catch the ball, um, he's really good cuts, and he, he has experience. You can tell that he's played before and, and has experience at this level, which I think goes a long ways. Um, he's a great kid, great guy. Um, very humble and soft-spoken and just goes about his business and you can tell he really cares about the game and wants to learn our offense. Coach seems really excited about Joshua Youngblood. Do you share that enthusiasm? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, I hosted um, Joshua Youngblood whenever he was uh, getting recruited here um, and from day one, first time I met him, I could tell that he was a special special dude uh, and special player. Um, he really cares about uh, our football program, and you can tell like his sense of urgency whenever he arrived in June that he was he was fully invested in wanting to learn the offense and trying to get involved. Um, and I think he realized that he had a he has a good chance to play this year, and he's he's made the most of his opportunities so far. Um, and I'm just looking forward to continue to work with him. Um, he has a type of speed that you can't teach, uh, and he's he's already a pretty well developed kid and and physical and um, and mature. So I think that's going to go a long ways for him. This offense. Scott, you've been at ground zero for the end of the Bill Snyder era and the beginning of the Chris Kleiman era. What contrasts or comparisons would you have for someone on the outside? Yeah. Um, well, with Coach Snyder, you're getting a Hall of Fame Hall of Fame coach um, who has run his program, you know, the same way for as long as he's been there. It's a hardworking program, very disciplined, very tedious on on little things that uh, that he expects of you. Um, and you're you're gonna work hard. You're gonna work harder than, than your opponents for sure. Um, and you're gonna be held to a high standard. Um, and you know, to this transition with Coach Kleiman, a lot of that's the same. Um, but we have more we have more freedom um, as players to kind of voice our opinion and have say in what we want to do. And he's open to it a lot more rather than uh, you know, Coach Snyder was like, this is kind of the way we're doing it, and we're gonna do it this way. A lot of coaching changes happen, and it's because the culture is broken. It's not like the culture yeah. at K-State is broken. No, no. It's just a change, a retirement. Yeah, no, one, that's 100% accurate. I mean, the, the culture has not changed at all. Um, it's really just picked up where, where it was left off. Um, we have we have great great guys on our football team who respect respect one another, respect people, respect their um, you know people around them, and uh, you know, that's not going to change. And, and Coach. Uh, Climate expects that of us all the time um, and holds us to a high standard as far as the way that we treat people and interact with others and show respect to, to people around us. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that, that's really an interesting, you know, point that you brought up that, you know, hasn't really been brought up to me before is that the culture is, is not broken and we are, uh, we're picking up right where we left off and we're going to, you know, focus on the things that we can control and try to win from the get-go. Are you guys that are bold enough after years under Coach Snyder, to go into Coach's office and pop off a few jokes, you know what I mean, with yeah. the new coach, new coaching staff. Well, I'll tell you what, that is, it is, it's different. It's different up there on the fourth floor as far as um, just feeling uh, comfortable enough to go in there and, and speak um, to to Coach Kleiman. Um, but that's one of the first things he emphasized to us whenever we uh, we got when it, whenever he got to K State was, if you're ever on the fourth floor and you walk by my office, don't say hi to me. Then you know we're gonna have problems. And uh, 
I think that says a lot about the type of coach and, and player, players coach that he is. And so every time I'm up there um, and I get a chance, I go in there and talk to him, watch film, and uh, just interact with him. You know, it's so cool because it's like, yeah, I'm not walking on on needles at all. It's just like I can just be be exactly who I am, and and you know, coach like this. It's, it's a personal relationship, you know. Like it's it's not always about football. Like he's asking me about you know what's going on in my personal life and how am I doing there and what's going on, what's new, and it's it's not just you know talking about football all the time, which it, it makes people want to come back up there and and uh, you know interact. With, with him and he makes himself available for for us which i think is is really important and says a lot about him and the type of coach and person he is coach said he's still looking for playmakers trying to figure out who they are but he knows you're one of them he wants to have you initiate as much as possible this year um what does it mean to hear that from him and i guess what have you shown him that uh gives him the confidence in you to, to believe that yeah well I, i've just been just playing my game uh, I don't know how else to, pay, to put it. I've been having a lot of confidence and hasn't, and I haven't looked over my shoulder or been afraid to make a mistake. And I think that's something I haven't done since I've been here at K-State. I've always been afraid to make a mistake um, and kind of walking on eggshells whenever I'm, I'm out there because I was always competing with somebody or somebody was breathing down breathing down my neck. Um, and now that that's, that's not really the case, that's it's given me a lot of confidence and, and allowed me to go out there and just, and just play ball and have fun and play free. And that's allowed me to make plays. Uh, I think one of my best uh, skill sets is extending a play when it breaks down and and finding people open. And I've been able to do that a lot this spring. And you know, but I've also, you know, realized, you know, kind of looking back at my old old tape from last year and the year before that there'd be times where I'd get out of the pocket too quick. I'd get kind of uh, freaked out there, and when there wasn't nothing coming, and I could hang in there and deliver a throw instead of scrambling. So I've just been trying to really. Um, pick and straw at what what my game has looked like and try to pick out the things I need to work on and get better at and try to grow from my strengths as well and just try to put the best product in myself that I can can possibly put out there um, as a leader as a player a person you know in, in all aspects to just try to, to be the best I can be how new is this offense to you and how much more comfortable do you feel like you need to become with it yeah uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot, lot different I'm under center quite a bit more um, there's a lot of pre-snap, you know, adjustments that are that are different. Uh, we're going to be in some different types of personnel that probably are not, you know, used to the Big 12. I was used to, uh, but it also, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to have so much experience in playing uh, in a college offense to where, you know, I've I've learned the game a lot and understand the the, foot, the really the true football side of things to where when I was learning this offense, it wasn't all like foreign language. Like it's all, you know, inside zone, outside, like all that type of stuff is the same. It's just called different um, and little tedious things that are that are changed up just based off the, you know, the, the type of offense it is. Uh, so that's been been that's helped me with my learning of the offense. Um, but there's still so, so much more further for me to go. Uh, but I've been I've been, you know, investing so much time this summer into learning this this offense, watching film from last year with a Vison stick and watching spring ball. I mean, I've watched everything you could possibly watch and then some uh, just trying to learn as much as I can and pick up as much as possible. And I've made so many strides in, in, in the right direction. But, you know, with any with any offense, there's always more. There's always more you can learn. There's always more you can grow from and expand on. Um, and there's no there's no time to get complacent and, and get comfortable because there's, there's always more out there. And that's one thing that Coach Klein has always uh, engraved in me and told me that there's always more. You can always get better, and um, you know that's that's the approach that I that I take take with it. When you were watching Carson and Easton do their things, what what most excited you about that, and what maybe you thought you could do similar? Yeah, well, I, I feel like my my skill set plays really well into how they they played. Um, they both could throw the ball, but were athletic guys that could run. And in this offense, you we're going to do both. Um, they're going to run the quarterback. They're going to throw. Then the quarterback is going to be the the center of the offense of, of how it's going. And they have a good run game, good play action. Like there's there's a lot of different um, keys and, and aspects that um, make it appealing to a quarterback as well as the language for the next level. Um, for me, you look at the resume of, of Coach Kleiman and him putting Carson Wentz in the NFL in the first round and uh, Easton this past year, like it's uh, it's gonna be a great opportunity for me. And that's, you know, that's been my dream my entire life to to play at the next level, um, 
and with Coach Kleiman and his resume of, of this offense and the play style and the language is going to prepare me for that opportunity if I ever get blessed enough to, to have that opportunity. So uh, that's what I look at it, and it's, it excites me. It excites me how, how, uh, how much privilege and ownership they give the quarterback of the offense, um, and that's, that really excites me to, to go out and play. Can you also tell me about Joaquin Gill? Do you think he's uh... – I mean, every time I see him, he's catching like a 70-yard pass. Yeah. <laughs> do you think he's ready to do that in games? Yeah, yeah. No, he, he's made tremendous strides this year. Um, and this spring ball, we, him and I connected a lot. And it, it often sometimes surprised me um, just because I hadn't – we hadn't really seen him at receiver that often, I mean, that much because he came in walked in as a, as a quarterback, knowing he was an athlete. But he's really, he's really gotten a lot better. Um, and he's fast. He's athletic, has great hands. Uh, and he's really just passionate about his work, which I really like. Um, he's always trying to get better, find ways to, to improve, and he has a really good speed. Um, now it's just putting it into a game, you know, because it's, it's a lot different going out there against a team. You don't know exactly how they're going to play it, you know, what they're going to do, um, and being able to adjust and, and just make a play, you know, because that's, I feel like that's a lot of the, out of my experience here at the, in the Big 12 so far that oftentimes it's, the biggest plays are the ones that are not, you know, planned. It's on a scramble or you, uh, you know, taking a hitch route, making a guy miss, and get, you know, going, going the distance. Like those are the type of plays that you can't really teach the people, and that's what separates a, you know, a good from great team for the the teams that can make those plays.